Good morning, FCC family. I hope you are as grateful to be alive today as I am. If you're new to us, please find more information about us at our website, FCCforsales.com or our Facebook page. We would love to connect and engage with you besides a video on Sunday morning. But today we're going to look at a portion of Psalm 92, and I want to make you a promise. For some of you, if you apply what you hear today, some of you, years from now, will be able to look back at this moment and say that this was when God started something special in your life. And that's not an overstatement. That is a promise if you apply what we talk about today. Let me begin by saying some of you need to stop going to church. Or maybe I should say during this pandemic, some of you need to stop watching church. You heard me right. Some of you need to stop going to church or watching church online. Because God's highest calling for you as a follower of Christ was never to go to a church, not to go to a building or simply watch a live stream service. God's highest calling for you is to be conformed to the image of Christ, not to go to church, but to be the church, a light shining in a dark world. Maybe instead of going to church, it's time instead to be planted in the house of God. Now, where does that language come from, the house of God? Well, Psalm 92, 12 says this, the righteous will, what? Say it aloud with me. The righteous will flourish. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. They're going to grow like a palm tree and like a cedar tree, and they're going to flourish. What does the word flourish mean? I mean, the word flourish isn't really a word that we use a lot in everyday language, at least I don't. I mean, if you call me and say, hey, Marcus, um, how are you doing? I'm not going to say, well, actually, to be honest with you, I'm flourishing. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, none of us would go to a guy at the gym. I mean, you can try it for fun. It's like, hey, bro, man, you got gains. You are flourishing. No, that is not what we would typically say. And if you did, you might not ever have a workout partner again, and you might get punched in the face when you're done. See, flourishing isn't a word that we often use, but it's a really great image of what happens when you're planted. And what does flourishing mean? It means thriving, prospering. It means to be a blessing. It means to have spiritual growth. It means that when you're righteous, when you're planted, you're thriving and prospering. And then the psalmist compares it to two trees, uh, the cedar and the palm. Cedar trees are known for their durability, for being pleasant to look at and also pleasing to smell. For example, when Solomon built the temple, he made the columns, the posts, the beams, and the roof out of cedar because the building was designed to last for centuries. I mean, cedar is durable. If you have a, a cedar chest, it's attractive and it smells good. And so we're being compared to flourishing like a cedar that's durable, strong, and lasting, and like a palm tree. The palm branch uh, of the palm tree was always symbolic of triumph and victory. We're flourishing, triumphant, and we are victorious. In the Corinthian Olympic Games, whenever someone would win the games, they would be presented with the palm branch. It's like, congratulations, you are the champion. It was their gold medal. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, it was known as a triumphal entry. Here comes the king. And so they waved palm branches at him. The righteous will flourish. Both trees are evergreen all year long. There's, there's life, there's strength, there's victory, there's fruit. How are you doing? I'm flourishing, I'm blessed, I'm growing. The righteous will, say it with me, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Scripture doesn't say those who are going to church or, or watch it on TV will flourish. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of God. I love that imagery. That they will still bear fruit, it says, in old age. They will still stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. 
Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they're flourishing, they're blessed, they're connected, they're emotionally engaged, they're making a difference, they're fulfilled, they're flourishing. Now, unfortunately, many of us couldn't use the word flourishing to describe our relationship with God or our present transformation into being more like Jesus. Instead of saying, I'm spiritually flourishing, we might say, honestly, I'm spiritually dry, right? Instead of saying, I'm thriving emotionally, some would say, I'm emotionally withering. Some, uh, instead of saying, you know, I'm connected relationally, some of us would say, I'm relationally barren. Instead of saying, I'm fulfilled spiritually, making a difference, full of joy, so many people say, I'm still searching, longing for, reaching for, hoping for that thing, that hit, that something, that relationship, that job, that whatever it is that I don't have that would fulfill what I'm missing on the inside. I go to church, but I'm not flourishing. Those who are planted are those who flourish. You need to recognize that your life is a seed. Now, what does that mean? A seed has tremendous potential to grow, to thrive, to multiply, to produce fruit, to be a blessing to others. But a seed that's not planted lies dormant, unproductive, unfruitful, and dissatisfied. Your life is a seed. And so let me give you a couple of principles about planting and seeds. Number one, a seed can only grow if it's planted right? I mean, a seed can only grow if it's planted. Who flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of God. In fact, Jesus told a story, a powerful parable in Matthew 13. He was talking about a farmer and he used the word sower, a word that his contemporaries would understand. And he said, a sower went out to sow or to plant some seed. And the sower, you know, threw seed out. And some of the seed fell on a path on hard ground. And since the seed could never take, you know, root, birds came along and stole the seed. And that seed never reached its potential. And then some seed fell in shallow soil. And so it sprouted. But because the roots, you know, never grew deep, whenever the, the sun beamed down, it withered up and died immediately. And then some started to grow, but then some other plants with thorns choked out the life of that little emerging plant. And Jesus said that it was the worries and concerns of this life. Do you understand the parable? Some people, they have the potential, but they never go anywhere. Some start to grow, but then they fade away. Some start to thrive spiritually, but the worries and concerns and the bills and the struggles of life, you know, choke out the spiritual growth. But then Jesus said, a seed falls on good soil and it multiplies 30, 60, 100 times. And that one seed becomes a, a massive blessing because it was planted in good soil. So who is it that flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, a seed can only grow if it's planted. Number two, going to church or streaming an online service isn't the same as being planted. Going to church isn't the same as being planted. There's a real difference, and you can even hear it in the language we use. For example, someone asks you, hey, are you going to church today? It's like, well, you know, we're kind of busy. There's a lot going on. There's a game. We're kind of tired, whatever it might be. And you can just hear it in that language. Listen, when you're planted, you know the church isn't a destination to which you attend. The church is a posture. It's who you are. We don't really ever ask ourselves, are we going to church? It's really not negotiable. In my family, we never ever say, are we going to church? Because we are the church. We are worshiping God. It's not a, a destination to which we attend. It's an identity inside of us. Just like I never say, hey, kids, do you think we ought to eat today? Are we going to eat or not going to eat? You know, or, or hey, do you, guys, do you guys want a breath of oxygen today or not? I mean, that's just those aren't options for us. Now, the Greek word translated as church has great meaning and depth to it. In fact, the Greek word ekklesia has really two meanings. Uh, first of all, it means gathering or assembly. In other words, if, if you watch a preacher's message online, that's good, and I recommend that you do that, but that's not the same as being planted in the house of the Lord. 
In the same way, I, I don't want to have a relational connection with my children just by having them listen to a voice message I send them. I want them assembled in my house because I'm the father and I love my family gathered together, meeting together. It's, it's the gathering. But the word ekklesia comes from two Greek words. Ek means out. Klesia comes from the word kaleo, which means called out or called. And so it very literally means the called out ones. In other words, we gather together to be unified. We gather together to honor our God. We gather together to corporately hear the word of God. We gather together to use our gifts. And as we are strengthened, it's not what happens inside the building. It's that we are the church sent out into the world. That's why one of our values as a church states we are contributors, not simply consumers. See, the church doesn't exist for us. When we're followers of Christ, we realize that we are the church and we exist for the world. There's a massive difference between going to a building and being plugged into a calling or a mission. We're planted in the house of God. That's why our mission statement at First Christian Church for Sales is, we exist to make disciples of Jesus by being the family of God sent into the world on a daily basis. Let me give you two scenarios. Let's take person A and person B. Which one are you? Person A, you know, goes to church and there are a myriad of variations to the story. But in essence, you know, I came and the song spoke to me or, or the message was like it was just for me or someone was so nice, they loved me and I felt loved and accepted. You know, some version of that. I felt empty on the inside. I recognized I had a spiritual need and so I called out to Jesus and my life was changed. But what doesn't happen in person A is they don't ever really connect with other believers. They don't, they never really take on the mission of the church for themselves. They still go to the church, but they kind of watch worship. There's no contribution. There's no real giving of themselves or serving or commitment behind it. We're still going to a church. And three years later, if not before, they're just coming on Easter and Christmas, if at all. And there's no way they can say, hey, I'm flourishing. Still may be saved. I'm not questioning, you know, their eternal destination, but they're certainly not flourishing. And then person B goes to church. Same story. Meshed speaks to me. Song, person, God answers a prayer, whatever. You know, I need Jesus. And then instead of not connecting, person B develops some relationships and someone else is praying for them. And then they're praying for someone else. And they recognize that God has given them gifts. And instead of just going to church, they use their gifts in the church and in the wider community. And suddenly the church isn't a destination they attend. It's an identity they embrace. I am a part of the family of God. And then the roots grow deeper. And no, their life isn't perfect. It's far from perfect, right? It's not always great. But when the storms come, the tree can withstand the storms because the roots are deep and we stay connected to God. See, there's a big difference between going to a building and being planted in the house of God. Now, what happens when you're planted? Two things. Number one, when you're planted, your roots grow deep. Your roots grow deep. Look at Jeremiah 17, 8. They are like trees that are planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. So when the roots grow deep, what happens? Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. How many of you are in a drought right now? living in a pandemic. When the roots grow deep, I'm not bothered by the heat, by the drought, because I'm connected to a source that is greater than any problem on the surface. The roots grow deep. In fact, have you ever researched redwood trees? Uh, redwoods are fascinating. They are the tallest living things on earth. They literally grow to a height of, of 30 stories, and they can be as wide as three stories. I mean, how in the world does a tree grow 30 stories high? It's because their roots grow deep. Their root system can go out 100 feet and up to 150 feet down and parallel. 
And so what happens is you have one, you know, 30 story high tree with roots going way, 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 way down. And then over here, another 30 story tree with roots that go way, way, way down. And then what happens is the roots actually intertwine beneath the ground where nobody sees and they create a support system that sustains their strength and their growth above the ground. And that's why we need the body of Christ. We need each other. We need each other. And I promise you this week, you will face struggles and oppositions. You'll face a trial or a setback. And if you face it alone, you're more vulnerable. I mean, I don't think Satan minds at all if you just go to church. The only one who wants you to think you shouldn't be planted is your spiritual enemy who wants you to be isolated because when you're isolated, you are vulnerable. We need the family of God. I need you and you need me. And I can't tell you what our church family has meant to, to us, praying for us. We, we've had more than one tough year with some tears and we are strong and blessed and encouraged because our roots are being supported by your roots. We need one another. Your roots grow deep. Number two, when you are planted and your roots go deep, your roots produce fruit. They grow deep and the tree produces fruit. I mean, look again at Jeremiah 17, 8. With roots that reach deep in the water, such trees are not bothered by the heat, are worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. See, when you're planted, you produce fruit. Now, what is fruit? Well, the Apostle Paul talked about this in Galatians 5, and he called it the fruit of the Spirit. It's not our natural fruit. It's a spiritual fruit that comes from God. In other words, when we are connected to the spiritual vine, God produces spiritual fruit that Paul said would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And when you're planted, all these good things come up, even when you're in a difficult season. Love still comes out. Joy still comes out in the middle of a trial. You can consider pure joy whenever you face trials and difficult times because you're planted and God is doing something special in you. And then you recognize these fruits aren't just for you that your love blesses other people and your joy is contagious and your peace is attractive and your faithfulness builds relationships and suddenly you realize I am planted and making a difference. Just try it. Pray for somebody. Just give to somebody. Make a difference. Be a voice of encouragement and come and serve somewhere and have an eighth grade boy look up to you and say, hey, I don't have a dad at home, but thanks for being a father figure to me. Just welcome somebody who looks different and says, hey, I was so afraid to come, but you loved me and you made me feel welcome here. And then you get a thrill. It's like, oh my, my goodness, God chose me to minister to that person. And then, you know, miss a week and have someone in, in a group, in one of your groups, reach out to you and say, hey, where were you? I missed you. Is everything okay? And you realize, you know, I'm, I'm getting some roots in this place. This isn't just a place where I go. This is family. I'm needed here. God needs me to do what he created me to do. I am known and I am loved. I'm planted in the house of God. And then you recognize, I'm not just saved from my sins, I'm saved for the glory of God to make a difference in this world. There's such a difference between going to church and being planted in the house of the Lord. Which one are you? Which one are you? Who is it that flourishes? Only a seed that's planted can grow and flourish. So how do we do this? How do we go perhaps from where you are to where God wants you to be? Well, the great thing about First Christian Versailles is that we aren't too big to help you figure this out. Now, during this time of physical distancing, it might be more difficult, but we can still figure this out together. If you would like to get planted and find out more how you can use your gifts, please email me 
at fccvstaff at gmail.com. We can talk through next steps that fit where you are personally. I mean, preferably, it would be at our house over some food someday soon. But we want to hear your spiritual story because everybody has a story and everybody starts at a different place. We want to help you find your place to connect. We want you to feel welcome. We want our spiritual family to be your spiritual family. We want you to know that you are making a difference. And if this isn't the right place for you, if this isn't the right you know, local family of God for you, then we want to help you find another great church family. I mean, I'm serious. Let's do it. It's time. Email me. If you're a follower of Christ, it's time. Do you really think you can find a way through all the spiritual opposition by going to church or worshiping simply online? Do you really think that when you spend more on coffee than you give to the work of God or in people of need, then you're really going to become a true disciple? Do you really think that when you spend more time on Instagram in a day than you spend serving others in a week, that you're really going to be conformed to the image of Christ? It's time. Find the right church family and be planted. It may not be ours. I can recommend some other good churches in our community. I'm friends with with most of the pastors from just about every tradition. If you can't plug in here, then please get planted at another congregation. God wants you to flourish. So how are you doing? Well, bro, I'm I'm flourishing. I'm thriving. Life's not perfect, but my roots are deep. My faith is strong. My brothers and sisters are praying for me. I am needed and I am loved. I am part of something. I don't go to a building. I am the church. I am God's ambassador in this world. I assemble and then I go out strengthened, planted in the house of of the Lord. And you might say, well, I tried. I went three weeks in a row. Nothing happened. Well, listen, it takes time for a tree to grow. Uh, In fact, trees need five things to flourish and grow. It takes soil, light, water, the right temperature, and time. It takes good soil, your heart, It takes light. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path. It takes water. Jesus is the living water who washes and renews your soul. It takes the right temperature. The fire of the Holy Spirit warms the seed planted in your heart. And it takes time. I mean, when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago, right? But when's the next best time? Right now. Now is the time because God wants you to flourish like the evergreen, stable, strong cedar tree and the victorious, triumphant palm tree. Only those who are planted in the house of the Lord are those who can truly flourish in all that God has for you. Let's pray. Father, we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would do what I cannot do. You would move hearts. Give us a desire, God, to be a part of your capital C church, making a difference in this world. God, help us to see that your church, not First Christian Versailles, your church, capital C church, is incomplete without your family planted, using what you've given them to make a difference in this world. I pray whether it's here or some other great church in the community, God, that you would help your people be planted, that they can flourish and glorify you in all that you do. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather virtually around this table, we are reminded that you are in control and we are not. Lord, you are all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-trusting. You provide for us now, have provided in the past, and will provide for us in the future. Your Son, Jesus Christ, died a gruesome death on the cross. We remember this death by partaking of the bread and the juice. We praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was to be betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks for it, he broke it saying, This is my body, which is for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, 
saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Please gather your elements and pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 